Hello, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated, and I just wanted to give you an idea of what two to three hundred activation locked iPads look like. So there they are. Um, you know, you'd think in the middle of a pandemic when inventory is highly constrained and people don't have a lot of money and they need devices for kids at home and for working at home, you'd think a stockpile like this would be the perfect solution to a lot of problems. Um, but unfortunately, these devices are all locked and Apple won't unlock them. So instead of helping out in a time of need, these devices and millions like them get scrapped. That is what happens. So what is activation lock? In short, Apple's iCloud system ties your Apple ID to a particular device. It does have benefits, but its major flaw is that if you fail to log out of your device properly when you give it away, sell it, or for whatever reason transfer the ownership to someone else, then that device becomes activation locked, just like this entire mountain before us is activation locked. And there's nothing you can do about it without Apple's help. And unless you're the original owner or you have a very close relation to the original owner and they're willing to help you, Apple will not unlock your device. So if you're the third owner or the tenth owner, it doesn't matter how legit you are, you're simply out of luck. Um, Apple has the keys to your property and they won't, won't let you access your own property. So now, it's, it's a common misconception that locked devices are stolen, but the truth is that the vast majority become locked when institutions discard them without disconnecting their accounts. Academia, government, corporations hand over thousands of devices at once to recyclers and others, and they simply don't care to log them out. Uh, why don't they? Because when people can be lazy and avoid doing something, they generally do avoid doing something. Look at how few people vote in this country. Um, in this case, it's because they've moved on to new devices and they just can't be concerned, something like that. Everyone in the recycling industry knows that half the iPads and iPhones you get are going to be locked for this reason. And if you're a recycler, good luck asking those institutions, which are essentially your customers, to fix the situation for you, because most of the time they won't answer your calls. So the really frustrating thing is, Apple fans will tell you this has to be this way because of security. Security, security, security. But that's a myth. In fact, these iPads have been securely wiped, yet they're still locked, and Apple won't unlock them. To unlock these iPads does not represent any kind of threat to anyone's data security. People say it has to be this way, but that's simply a lack of vision, and Apple could use any number of methods to verify legal ownership and unlock devices, but they choose not to. Instead of taking ownership of the problem, Apple and all the Apple fans say it's the previous owner's fault for not following procedure. But if you think about it, when the result of a design is that millions of good devices are scrapped, it's fairly self-evident that the design is the problem. You can't just blame all the people in the world and all the companies in the world if the system you produced always seems to result in millions of devices scrapped. I mean, just think about it. Now, I know a lot of you are going to tell me these devices can be jailbroken and they, they can be made to some degree to work again. And that's somewhat true, but the thing is, jailbreaking is, is sort of a hack. You can't in good conscience sell hacked devices to unsuspecting consumers. And uh, even if you could, it doesn't solve the bigger issue, which is that recyclers and others don't have the time to implement some sort of highly technical procedure. They don't have the knowledge, they don't have the time because they have millions of devices to get through. And so the fact is that any device that presents an obstacle, like an activation lock, is simply going to get scrapped even though there may be some way to do surgery on the device and make it work again. And uh, extrapolate that out and you're talking about millions of machines, millions of devices. And soon, guess what? You're talking about MacBooks too, because every MacBook as of 2018 will be bricked in just a matter of time uh, due to the T2 chip and activation lock um, being applied for MacBooks and other devices as well. Uh, you know, believe it or not, there are $3,000 bricked MacBooks out there right now that Apple won't do anything about. My experience with these kinds of locks tells me that about a fourth to a third of devices get bricked with a, with a transfer of ownership. So what that means is that pretty much all devices are bricked after the first three to four owners, uh, which is pretty depressing. And another thing that really drives me nuts is that millions of devices are scrapped, and yet the general public doesn't even know because, kind of like slaughterhouses hide what they do behind closed doors, the recycling industry is effectively hidden from, from public view. Uh, the vast majority of repairable and reusable devices die quiet deaths in rural warehouses in this country, and the average person doesn't have the slightest clue about it. So things like jailbreaking, while I'm a fan of that community, uh, that really doesn't tackle the whole problem. Going at it that way is kind of like bailing out a sinking freighter with a teaspoon. You're, you're just not going to get there. 
Um, I think what really needs to happen is for us to call out the source of the problem, which is Apple. Apple is engaging in a total war on the reuse of devices, and not only that, but it's causing a massive environmental nightmare, which is highly hypocritical because it is in total contrast to its pro-environmental marketing that you see everywhere. So we need to go to the source and call Apple out, but what we really need to do beyond that, I think, is support right to repair legislation. Uh, because the fact is, Apple is highly unlikely to listen to us, and so they need to be made to comply with laws that we pass. Uh, that's probably the only way. Right to repair isn't perfect, but it's a first step. Um, it takes a stand for our property rights, the fact that we own these devices and deserve to do what we want with our property. Um, it requires manufacturers to provide parts, tools, repair information, possibly software tools to deal with locks. Hard to say if it'll do that, but but hopefully. Um, again, it's not everything, but it's a foot in the door. It takes a stand. It stands a chance of at least stopping the bleeding and illuminating the situation in such a way that we might actually have a path forward. So please go to repair.org and check it out and do what you can do. And also another angle on this is to go check out your local elect electronics recycler. Uh, like I said, the recycling industry is in the dark, uh, but it shouldn't be. It really shouldn't be. I buy thousands of repairable devices a year from recyclers, and part of the reason they scrap so much is not that they're evil uh, or that they're, they're trying to do wrong, but it's that we produce so much e-waste in this country that they have no time to put every device in its proper place. It's just impossible. And they also have nowhere near enough buyers, enough resources to, to get rid of any given part or any given device. But if we can get thousands of people to knock on the doors of recyclers and let them know that we're here, that we care, that we'll pay good money for what they have, that we'll pay far more than the scrap value that they get when they scrap stuff, uh, then I know they'll listen. And I know we can make a dent in the problem and get devices repaired and back into use in the world. I know that because that's what I've spent the last 12 years doing in my business. And I know there's enough material out there that hundreds of thousands of additional businesses like mine uh, could easily exist as well. So anyway, rant over. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you soon.